In this video, we are deepening the understanding of the graph mapper and its domains. The video aims to show you different aspects of the graph mapper, allowing you to identify and fix any issues concerning the use of this tool in your definitions. If you haven't seen the previous tutorial on applying graph mapper in more general terms, I advise you to do so before continuing. In this example, I'm using the range component to generate x coordinates to construct points, and for the y coordinates, I'm going to remap values using the graph mapper. Let's begin by connecting the remap numbers output to the graph mapper. The first thing to notice is the appearance of red vertical lines in the graph mapper capsule. These lines represent the positions of x or argument values in relation to the function graph. If we increase the number of samples, the preview will reach a vanishing point when the red lines are no longer visible. In this instance, all the domains in the definition are normalized, meaning they are all from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. The function spreads from 0 to 1 along the x-axis and also from 0 to 1 along the y-axis. But notice, if I change the position of the Bezier curve endpoints, the graph mapper output domain changes. The values stay within the set bounds, but do not match the set domain. Let's try changing the remap number's target domain to something different. Let's say from 2 to 8. All the graph mapper output values are now clipped at the end of its y domain, which is 1, because the supplied domain exceeds the domain within which the Bezier graph operates. I'm going to right click on the graph mapper and lock the graph so that I don't accidentally modify it. Now let's double click and access the graph editor and let's change the argument domain, x domain, to match the remap number's target domain, so from 2 to 8. You can see that we get the same output, so as long as the input domain matches the function argument domain, the values are distributed throughout the whole graph. So that's one of the reasons why normalized domains are so popular, because in essence it doesn't matter what the domains are as long as they match. So let's change the input domain again so that the values that we supply are lower than the domain in which the Bezier curve operates. The output values are all clipped at the start of the Y domain. In my case, it is at zero. I'm going to return the definition to a normalized version and let's investigate a scenario where we distribute the X coordinates for points exceeding single unit domains. So I need to change the domain input for the range component. I'm going to type in from minus 5 to 5. We get a skewed representation in Rhino preview, but I would like to bring back the initial proportions, so I'm going to change the Y domain inside the graph editor. And just a quick reminder from the previous tutorial that we can also modify values outside the graph mapper. Here I'm multiplying both x and y coordinates to construct points. And of course we can change the initial domain, we don't have to start from zero. Let's now see how we could distribute points within a subdomain of a graph. First, I'm going to change the x domain inside the graph mapper so that x domain is now from 0 to 5, while I'm supplying remapped values that are between 0 and 1. So I am now operating on only one fifth of the Bezier curve. Let's reduce the number of points so that this distribution is visible in the graph mapper capsule. So again, in this instance, I am taking only a portion of a function and then spreading it along the x-axis to create points. It's time to pause the video and think through the steps before proceeding. What needs to be changed so that point positions would match the underlying graph curve? In this example, 
It is enough to change the domain for the X coordinate so it matches the graph mapper input. And in fact, here we don't need to use the remap numbers part. We can directly connect the range component to the graph mapper. Let's try to pick another subdomain and it all works as expected. So we have talked about operating on a subdomain of a graph curve. Now let's talk about exceeding it. I'm going to change the input domain for x coordinates to be from minus 5 to 5 or maybe from minus 5 to 10. And you can see I get these sort of tails. This is similar to the remap numbers component clipped values output. So the y coordinates of the points which have x coordinates smaller or larger than the graph mapper domain are clipped at the start or the end of the y domain respectively. In the output panel we can also see that we get zeros, then some mapped values and then fives. We get these clipped values because the Bezier curve has its endpoints, as I've mentioned in the previous tutorial, so it's not infinite. Let's see what results we could get when applying other types of functions. So linear, parabola, sine. With these types, we don't get clipped values. I encourage you to play around and investigate how such types of functions react to different input domains. This is it for this tutorial. I have one last thing to show you from the Rhino forum. This is the Riched Graph Mapper plugin. It's quite popular. I will leave the link to the discussion in the description box below. Keep learning and I will see you in the next video.